In this webcast, we're going to look at the appropriate conditions for the efficient formation of the enolate anion. Formation of enolate anions requires an appropriate base. The base that has stood the test of time for the efficient formation of enolate anions is known as lithium diisopropyl amide. Now, two key features of this base make it appropriate for forming enolate anions. Recall from the last webcast that the pKa of acetone was about 20. Now, the pKa of diisopropylamine is about 35. Therefore, its conjugate base must be a stronger base than an enolate anion. Additionally, the steric bulk provided by the isopropyl groups on LDA render it non-nucleophilic and not amenable to attacking the carbonyl carbon. Therefore, it strictly functions to deprotonate the alpha protons on the alpha carbons. We've seen this feature built into bases before in our use of potassium terbutoxide in our studies of the E2 mechanism. By now, you should have a good understanding of pKa and the ability to predict which side equilibrium favors. In looking at the reaction of sodium hydroxide and acetone, we compare the pKa of the two conjugate acids. Acetone has a pKa of 20 and water has a pKa of 15.7. Therefore, we can determine that equilibrium lies to the left in the weaker acid of acetone. When we look at the reaction of LDA and acetone, again, we compare the two conjugate acids. Acetone has a pKa of 20, and isopropylamine has a pKa of 35. Therefore, equilibrium lies to the right in the formation of isopropylamine and the enolate anion. Now let's take a look at the concept of thermodynamic versus kinetic control of enolate formation. With a slight variation in reaction conditions, we can drastically alter which enolate is formed. By comparing the two enolates that are formed, A and B, we know that B is the most stable because it contains the most substituted double bond. However, we can see that enolate A is formed fastest because there are two protons twice the chance of the LDA deprotonating on the left side and a methyl group which provides slight steric hindrance to the deprotonation of the proton shown in red. However, when we switch the reaction conditions and provide a slight excess of 2-methyl cyclohexanone, primarily enolate B is formed. We know from the first experiment that enolate A is formed fastest. Therefore, enolate A will still be formed fastest in the second reaction. You should stop the webcast now and think about how adding a slight excess of 2-methyl cyclohexanone can provide a pathway for enolate A, the fastest formed enolate, to transform into enolate B. You should become comfortable with the formation of enolates. You should recognize that this is a simple acid-base reaction. Therefore, by comparing the pKa's of the conjugate acids in the reaction, you can determine if it's a reversible or irreversible process.